So I have been thinking about trying out a minimal web browser. You guys know I'm all against the bloat. I like minimal programs. And recently I've been thinking about my web browser. I have been a Firefox user since the beginning, since the beginning of Firefox, right? Since that, that project started, I have been a Firefox user. And before Firefox came into existence, I was a Netscape user going back, you know, into the mid nineties. So that's all I, I know is that browser, Netscape slash Firefox. I was never an Internet Explorer user. Even when I was running Windows, I never used any of the, the Windows browsers. Now Microsoft's Edge browser, never used it, never used Google Chrome. Other than on an Android phone, I've used the mobile Chrome, but on a physical machine, I have never installed that proprietary garbage that is Google Chrome. I've always been a Firefox user. And recently I've started thinking, you know what, I should try a more minimal browser because as great as Firefox is, it's anything but minimal. It's quite heavy and bloated, just like any modern browser, just like Chrome is and Chromium and Microsoft Edge. Pretty much all the mainstream browsers are big, heavy and bloated, and they have just a ton of features, which can be good for some people, but for me, I'm much more basic, much more simple. I just want a window that renders a web page. That's really all I want. So the, the past couple of weeks, three, four weeks actually, I've been playing a lot more with the Surf Browser, which is Suckless's Surf Browser. It is based on the WebKit engine, and it is a really interesting browser. Uh, it's got some nice features to it. There's a lot I like about the Surf Browser, but at the same time, I've come to the conclusion that the Surf Browser is not a viable option. I have heavily patched my Surf. I'm going to go ahead and package my custom build of Surf for you guys that want to try it out. But I can tell you, Surf does have some issues. Let me switch to my desktop and let me actually launch the Surf Browser. So this is my Surf Browser. This is a custom uh, start page here in the Surf Browser. But it does meet some of the qualifications that I want in a minimal browser. I think for a browser to be minimal, it, I don't need to ever see tabs. I don't need to see a tab bar. I don't need to see a URL bar. I don't need to see, you know, file edit preferences of any kind of menu. I don't need to see any of that stuff except when I need to see it. So if I need the URL bar, you know, in surf here, I think I just control G for go g go anyway you, then i can you know search through some of the histories or bookmarks that i have and now i see a url bar it's really just d menu that launches inside surf and then you know i can go to the url that i want to go to if i want to go back uh, control h you know the vim keys h j k l do a lot here in the surf browser which i like that it uses some vim like bindings so the surf browser does a lot of things right it gets that minimal experience right but why have I come to the conclusion that the Surf Browser is not right for me? Let me open up my YouTube page. And let's wait for the page to finish loading. I think the page is finally finished loading. Now that, that took a minute, right? That, that takes a long time. That is a very long time for the, uh, a web page to launch. And that's not unusual. My YouTube page is not some special web page. I, I could have picked any other kind of modern heavy page that has a lot of graphics or a lot of JavaScript stuff going on, a lot of ads. If I wanted to, I mean, let's go to CNN.com, you know, because it's a news site. It's going to have a ton of ads and multimedia and all kinds of other stuff loading on the page that actually didn't load too slow. I mean, that was not as bad as the YouTube page loading, but you know, it's still, that that's not fast, right? And I'm not one of these web browser snobs where I'm timing how fast pages load in milliseconds or something, right? People will tell me, oh, Chrome is faster than Firefox and Vivaldi is faster than this and this is faster than that. And you know, I, most modern web browsers, I've never noticed a difference of speed because they're so close. If, if there's a difference, I, I don't think most users would really notice, but I'm telling you right now, the surf browser is slow. That WebKit engine that it uses is terribly slow. It, it loads some pages, you know, like 
it takes five times as long for some of these pages to load in Surf as it does in Firefox. And it, it's frustrating. It's not going to be a good experience. While I think the web browser gets a lot of things right, I really like some of what goes on with Surf. The speed is a problem. Also, performance is a problem. For some reason, the Surf browser uses a ton of CPU and RAM. It, it just does. Again, I think it's part of the problem with the WebKit engine that it uses. I also just think it's just a poorly built web browser. I think the suckless guys, because they try to do things the suckless philosophy with as few lines of code as possible and as minimal as possible, they've built this very nice minimal web browser, but in a lot of ways it's kind of broken. Uh, if, if you want a pleasant web viewing experience, the Surf browser, unfortunately, as much as I, I really want it to work, it's limited. I'm basically looking for the Surf browser, a minimal Surf-like experience, but something that renders web pages a lot faster. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the Surf browser, and I've started looking at some other options, and I found three different browsers that I'm going to start trying out myself. The first one is Cute Browser. Now, I've heard about the Cute Browser for a couple of years now. I've actually installed it two or three different times and just briefly tried it out for a few minutes on my machines over the years. Never really tried it out long term, but it does seem like it meets a lot of the criteria that I want out of a browser. Let me launch the Cute Browser here. So the Cute Browser, again, is another kind of minimal web browser. You know, it gets rid of a lot of the cruft and, you know, the tabs and the URL bars and all of that. It kind of hides all that extra stuff, mainly just a plain window. I mean, I do have actually the tabs here at the top. I could probably hide that if I wanted to. I mean, it offers a lot of customization, but... I don't mind having the tabs visible. That is a pretty small bar at the top. It's not eating up a lot of screen real estate. It's mainly keyboard driven, just like the Surf browser uses a lot of Vim like key bindings for opening a URL instead of Control G, which was what we used in Surf. I think uh, just colon and O for open, yeah. And then I could give it a URL. It does show the history, though. And I like one of the default uh, history things is the key bindings themselves. The default key bindings in Qt. We could actually look through this. If I wanted to open a tab, there's actually tabs built into Qt Browser. There are not tabs built into Surf. You actually have to use a secondary program for tabs. If you want to use tabs, I installed Suckless's tabbed for Surf. Uh, but we don't have to do that with Qt. Qt actually has tabs, I believe, if I look for some of the tab stuff. Looks like this uh, key binding right here, G capital C for tab clone. So G capital C basically opens up a second tab, the same page that we were in, in a second tab. And from here, you know, I could navigate to a, another web page. Let's see how long my YouTube page takes to render in the Qt browser. You know what? That was quick. On a recent video, let me, let me mute that. That was not bad. And that's surprising. That's very surprising because the Qt browser is very much like Surf in that it uses the WebKit engine. The same engine that uh, the Surf browser uses, but it looks like it renders web pages a lot faster. Let me try again another kind of heavy page. Let's, again, I'll travel to CNN's website just because I know it's got a lot of ads and a lot of images. You know, that, that loaded so much faster than the Surf browser. I would definitely prefer to use the Qt browser right now rather than Surf. I may start using the Qt browser. I, it may become my main browser of choice at some point. I don't know. I've, I've got to experiment a little more with it, but I didn't just download the Qt browser to try out. I wanted to try a couple of different things, and another one I came across the other day was VimB. And this one I had never heard of. Now, Cute Browser has been around for a little bit, and I've heard about the Cute Browser. Uh, somebody mentioned VimB the other day to me, and I was like, what the hell's VimB? Well, it's a Vim-like browser. Once again, it uses the WebKit engine. So, Surf, Cute Browser, and VimB all use the WebKit engine, which is the same engine that Apple Safari uses, for those of you wondering what the hell the WebKit engine is. And VimB, you know, it's... A, a minimal experience. This is VimB. Uh, again, no toolbars, no URL bars, none of that, no tabs. I don't think VimB has built-in tabbing, but we can get 
tabs inside VimB by just using the suckless tabbed program since I already have it on the system. If I just run tabbed space VimB and then give it this flag dash E, it will launch VimB with tabs. Now because my version of tabbed is a patched version that automatically auto hides the tabs uh, that my tabs won't show until in my build I hit alt control and then it shows me the tabs. If I release alt control they go away. If I do alt control enter I can open a second tab and once again once I release alt control you know the tabs go away. That's just tab that really has nothing to do with VimB but VimB same kind of browser, right? No toolbars, nothing. It uses Vim-like bindings, very similar to Qt browser. You know, I can do colon O to for open, and I could actually type, uh, I don't know, google.com. Would that actually work? Yes. So some of the bindings are very similar in Vimb to Qt browser, which could be helpful if I'm going to play around with both. But I think it would be interesting, actually, for me to open. Well, not in that, though. Let me get out of that search form and see does it remember my history have i been to my youtube page it doesn't look like i've been to it but let me type youtube.com slash distro tube let's see how long this page loads in vimb again webkit browser you know, and it, that's very fast. It seemed very similar to Qt Browser. Both Qt Browser and VimB, though, seem better <laughs> than Surf. It, the, these pages just load faster than the Surf Browser. So, um, And we haven't r opened up HTOP or anything. It'd be hard for me to get accurate readings because I've got several different browsers open right now, including Firefox on a separate screen, and I'm recording in OBS. I've got a lot going on. But I can tell you, just opening up HTOP, Qt Browser, and VimB, they just suck up a lot less CPU and RAM than Surf. I don't know why, but that is the case. VimB's pretty interesting. If I open up a uh, file manager, let me open up a graphical file manager. This is PC Man FM. If you go to dot config in your home directory, VimB does create a directory inside your dot config directory. And inside that directory, you're not going to have this file by default, but I did find a sample config file on their website, and this is a VimB config, and this is where you can set things like font, font face, font size, various color settings, you can set your default search engine. And of course, you can set some custom key bindings. If you don't like the default key bindings, I, I set my start page to a custom page that I created, a local page here on the system. So if I just launch VimB, I won't bother with the tabs. No, this is my start page, the same start page that was in Surf. Let me close VimB. So that's a little bit of what I've, you know, I haven't really played with Qt Browser or VimB at all. I've just downloaded them like in the last couple of days. There was one other browser I may or may not take a look at, but I will discuss it on this video because some of you guys have asked me about Min, the Min browser. Now this is not quite as minimal as the three browsers I've already shown you. It's not in the same league as Surf, Cute Browser, VimB, but Min is still a pretty minimal browser. It's designed to be fast, minimal, and privacy respecting. It does uh, do some ad and tracker blocking which is nice that that's kind of built into the browser. You see some screenshots here. The screenshots look very nice. I mean, it does have a title bar, but it's like a single title bar. Everything's kind of condensed. The tabs and the URL bar are all kind of in one bar, as, long, as well as the window decorations, but using a tiling window manager, I'm not going to have window decorations in the windows anyway. So it looks pretty neat if I switch to the desktop. Let me launch Min so you can can see men out of the box. This is men. And it opened up some tabs. Well, let me close some of these tabs. Alright, and then this is really the default page. When you launch men for the first time, you get this welcome screen, welcome to men. You can take a tour. The tour is just the men website. And it tells you a little bit kind of what's going on with the browser, some settings you can set. Pretty self-explanatory. I will say men is probably not going to work for me because there's a couple of things right off the bat. Just for me personally, I don't like this bar at the top. I don't need the menu bar. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to get rid of it. At least there's no way to get rid of it in this bar. I would have assumed that somewhere in the view menu there would be 
like a option to disable that bar, but there isn't one. There is this focus mode thing, but the focus mode, what that does is in focus mode, all tabs except the one you're actually on are hidden. So let me turn that on. So if I opened a second tab, if I go to file here and go to new tab, and you can see the, the key binding is here too. I could just do control T to open a new tab as well. So you can see without the focus mode turned on, we have tabs, right? I can open up a new tab. If I want to go somewhere in this blank tab, I can just click on the new tab and you get the search or address bar, depending on whether you want to do a search or actually enter a URL. Maybe I want to go to google.com. Um, matter of fact, let me instead, why don't we try youtube.com slash distro tube. And let's see how long um, this page loads in min. I expect this to load quite a bit faster and you know it, it loaded pretty quickly now men the other reason I don't think I'm gonna use men is other than it's not quite as minimal at least the display is not as minimal with the bars and the tabs and everything the other problem is it is based on the chromium engine and I would prefer not to use a web browser that uses Google technology and if I go back to their github page they mentioned that the Min browser uses an older version of Chromium, which may be missing security fixes from later versions. So they're basically saying they're using a version of the Chromium engine that may actually have some security bugs in it. That, that's kind of a strange thing <laughs> to do and to say right there on your page. So I probably won't do much with the Min browser, but you know, I just thought I would throw it out there for some of you guys that are looking for a more minimal browser. Maybe you don't want to go as minimal as Surf, Cute Browser, Vimby. Those, those are pretty minimal. Maybe you want something that actually has menus and tabs and URL bars and it's not quite as keyboard driven. I mean, you can, you can use keyboard shortcuts in Min, but of course you can just, you know, click things and, and get, you know, normal URL bars and search bars and, you know, you can view your bookmarks. You can import bookmarks also, import and export bookmarks here inside the Min browser. You can also get a display of all your open tabs and switch you know graphically through your tabs so it's not like you're hitting all these weird vim like key bindings especially you guys that are not used to doing things in a keyboard centric way the min browser actually may be a better option for you guys for me i'm probably going to take a pretty hard look at cute browser and vimb here in the near future now before i go i want to thank a few special people this show was sponsored by Michael, Mitchell, Chris, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Nate, Lambda, Omri, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they're the producers of the show. They're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about these minimal web browsers wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all these ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen right now, all my supporters over on Patreon. Without each and every one of those ladies and gentlemen, the channel wouldn't be possible. So I want to sincerely thank each and every one of those folks. If you'd like to support the channel, consider doing so. You will find me over on Patreon. Just look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.